So this is the, the, the demo platform that we have, but it's basically perfectly in line with what we offer our customers. And so the idea is that we do asset management. And so uh, you can manage your different assets. You can see we're very active in Europe and on the demo. And the idea is that um, we offer products throughout the entire life cycle. So if we focus on the first product that I talked about, which is the thermography, I can click on a site and I can see all of the different inspections I've provided, uh, I've, uh, I've performed. You can see some information about users, there's advanced user management. You can overlay a lot of different things, but let's just get quickly to the, the main uh, value here is that we've got this map view. And I think most of our audience will know what auto mosaics are and, and these things. So I'll, I'll, I won't cover that too much. But the, the main thing is that we offer a visual auto mosaic um, and we offer, sorry, I have a challenge. Here we go. We offer a visual auto mosaic and we offer also the ability to, over, uh, to overlay your panel layout. So you can overlay anything from a DXF to a PDF to give some more context and to really understand what you're looking at. So what we can see here, for example, is there are some visual damages. So customers can basically create annotations around that quite quickly. And they can also create what we call punch list items or tickets that then can be addressed by technicians uh, directly in the field. So you can see the ticket goes from in progress to resolved. So you, you can already work with visual data, but of course we're not here to, to just do visual data and maintenance based on visual data. We also have this thermal data which is in the end uh, very similar to the RGB of the mosaic, uh, an auto mosaic based on all the thermal photos that we've taken. By the way, at any point in time, you can visualize these individual photos. Um, that's not a problem. But of course, our service is not just visualizing the thermography because otherwise all of our customers would need to be thermal experts or for example, the drone service providers which are reselling our service. And not, not everyone is a, a, a level one certified thermographer. And that's why we are also automatically detecting the anomalies. So we can basically highlight all of the different anomalies and they get a different color depending on what type of problem they represent. Um, and at that point, you can get a very nice overview. Okay, I have a string here. We've got some issues there, green ones, yellow ones. Um, and at any point in time, you can click on a, on a broken panel and you can get information on what type of panel problem it is, what is what is under the underlying issue. So in this case, it's a physical internal issue. Sorry, uh, but you can go and see in the visual space, okay, uh, we don't see anything, but sometimes we see shadowing or bird spots or things like that, shattered glass. So we can also find what is causing the issue. We can give an idea of estimation. We can give you all the details uh, Tem temperature information. We can give you the weather information because, of course, the the the, the amount the, co the weather conditions under which we did the inspection have a huge amount of effect on what you will find in the thermography. So we also normalize this information to give you a very objective measurement, uh, which which brings it down to lab conditions. So it's the equivalent of sending that panel to the lab, um, except of course sending a. Uh, 100,000 panels to a lab will cost a lot, whereas flying 100,000 panels with a drone can be done in a day. Um, and then, of course, you've got the full history of that problem. So I, I talked about the digital uh, aspect of being able to track solutions over time or, or issues over time. So you can see this last year, there was only one of these hotspots. This year, we've got two. Um, and the idea is then that customers can also go into a statistics mode where they get a bit more info on uh what type of losses they're looking at uh historical analysis how many problems have been recurring the distribution so what type of problems are we finding on which inverter which string things like that uh, shadowing 70 percent of the issues were caused by shadowing customer can click on that and then they can say filter i want to be able to see all of the anomalies caused by shadowing here we go it filters on that on these and then i can go back for example to my map and I can go and visualize, okay, it's strange because there is this line of, of issues that seem to all have shadowing, what's happening here. And when I look at this, I make a bit of, I see that it's always these lines. So then I can say, okay, I remove the thermal and then I can start seeing there is this shadows ah, and the shadows are actually originating from this power line. So most likely this power line is creating all these shadows and then customers can even with the field link app uh, I didn't talk about, but you can take photos from on site taken from just smartphones. So you can integrate all of that into, into a nice platform. So quite quickly, you can really see how powerful the platform can be uh, in terms of 
finding problems, ticketing them, prioritizing. You can export, share. There's a million ways you can do reporting. Um, and that's really it on the, on let's say, on the thermography side in a nutshell. Um, uh, if I could ask a, a few questions, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. How frequently, currently, with drone technology, so the plants that you're you're currently uh, inspecting, how frequently are you flying the entire plant? Uh, so once a year is really what 90% of the customers tend to go for. Um, and the reason for that is that that's what the IEC recommends, so the, the official standard. Uh, but on top of that, also anomalies don't change that fast. And most of our customers do have a monitoring system which is going to send them an alarm if a big part of the site uh, breaks down, basically. The, uh, the monitoring systems are really good at ensuring availability, making sure that all the hardware is available. Uh, we are there to do performance, but you're not gonna send a technician five times a year to your site anyway. So if you're doing a thermography every year and you're sending a technician after the thermography and he knows exactly what to go and look for, we think that's a very efficient way of working. There are some cases, for example, in the Middle East where we do, uh, let's say, three, four flights a year uh, or some specific sites where we where we do also uh, multiple flights a year. And that's also often larger plants. Uh, and also on small CNI, sometimes we even only fly once every two years. So it really depends on the need, frequency, the budget. Um, but that's the recommendation. Okay. And the other question, you said you had it, multiple. Yes. Uh, Going th going through this this demo, I mean, you obviously know these uh, these demo configurations or or these demo sites, and so you went through it quickly and fluidly. And you know, uh, basically, yeah. my question is, for someone to become a site mark user or customer, do mm -hmm. you provide training on how to navigate all of these things and to become an expert in tuning and uh, reporting and understanding those reports or is that like uh, how how does training on the sitemark software work that's that's the overall question so if you ask if you ask our product team they will tell you sitemark is like an iphone you don't need a manual you just give it into the the customer's hands and they'll be able to play with it they'll get joy out of it from day one uh in practice it's not always the case and so we also have uh, of course, of training. Uh, so we have uh, four different trainings. We have one on piloting, so how to pilot a drone, how to capture data efficiently for thermography. We have one on the platform. We have some on, on efficiently working with the field apps for field technicians. So there's a lot of different stakeholders that collaborate in such a solution. And so we've got trainings for all of them because we believe long-term value is created when people fully appreciate and understand how to use and fully benefit from from the solution because there are a lot of different things you can do with this uh, but Great. we do have yeah. the trainings and they're all online uh, so you can basically follow them online next question if there nope. is a next question okay nope that's it that was the, that was that's my question it. so then i will talk to you about uh, the construction so we've got also a solar construction solution where we do the topography uh, and, and, and let's say the construction. So here we can see how such a project looks like. So if I remove Google Earth, you can see that the, the system can, can make a nice auto mosaic of the entire plant. We can also, of course, create a surface model. This is quite, let's say, generic to the drone industry. I think there's a lot of tools offering this, but after that, it also moves further because we can visualize the entire thing in a, in a point cloud and we've got a very fast uh, and snappy point cloud viewer so you can really in any type of browser visualize your entire project you can go and make 3d annotations uh, and basically the the main benefit is that we capture the entire terrain and we create uh, the different contour lines so we can do that before vegetation after vegetation because we also support lighter data so we can see through the vegetation and create like dtms dsms and then if you export all of this topography data and the key line work you can very easily uh, design a site based on this information so it's it's basic uh, oh i'm opening a bit too much <laughs> It's very basic uh, tools that help you get the job done. On top of that, I wanted to show so that we've got a quite powerful volume measurement tool. So you can basically select any type of area and the system will automatically detect the cut and fill volumes, give them to you. In this case, uh, it's in cubical meters. I should have put the demo on the Imperial uh, system. 
but we do support, of course, uh, the US way of, of, of measuring. <laughs> um, no problem with that. So after that, of course, you want to move ahead and, and build your site. And that's where we can show also progress. So we can show, of course, that the 6th of October, uh, the entire plant was, was cleaned up. And then we can go and move ahead and see how the, how the project moves on over time. So you can see, for example, here that we've got installation of piles. There's much more than that. So maybe we can open one of these projects. So here we can see, um, for example, the system has automatically detected the trenches. So we have uh, a lot of AI in the back, which helps us detect different elements like trenches. And then the customer can overlay again uh, the DXF, for example, and then they can see how well are the trenches in line with the design? Are we constructing everything correctly? For example, here we've got a trench that should be placed here, which ended up being placed underneath the tables. Uh, if we add piles, so if we add these green piles, we can see that they're dangerously close to these trenches. So whenever these trenches will be backfilled and then the next contractor comes to put in piles, if he didn't dial up his GPS correctly, he might be ramming piles into your expensive cables, which puts the project back a couple of weeks ends up being extra costs. So these are things you want to you want to detect upfront because now you can very simply click on that trench, export it as a DXF or a KML or whatever format you're using, put it into your CAT uh, software and design the plant according to the, the changes made by the, the, the field staff. Uh, and so you can constantly iterate on your design based on changes that were made uh, very easily. Um, and of course, the project goes on, goes on, goes on. So you can see in a further stage, for example, here we are installing piles and then we are going to, uh, I, don't, I never know exactly which one is the same one. <laughs> but if we go to the 9th of, of November, for example, here we can see that we are installing uh, the different piles. So the system has automatically detected all of these red uh, dots, but I can again overlay the exact pile locations. And I can see that, for example, here there is a pile missing. For some reason they didn't ram it in. Uh, but I can also see, which is more worrying, piles that are not in the correct location. So it should have been here, but it has been rammed in the wrong location. I can go and measure. Why is there a deviation? Okay, that's about a meter. How come, why? I can jump into a Zoom call with my contractor and say, hey, uh, what's happening here? Why did you decide to move this row and not the others? And actually this row too. Uh, is there a reason for that? Was it related to maybe the trenches being too close to the poles or, or what happened? You can have very uh, strong conversations. Um, and of course, then you can move on to an even more Thanks, advanced man. stage. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, no, I don't, don't apologize. But uh, for this whole process, uh, you just talked to talking to the contractors, how shareable is what you're looking at right now with other people, other stakeholders within the loop. Can you basically send a link that would share this and you could go over it or would it only be that you're sharing a screen or something like that? So there's tons of different ways. Uh, you, of course, we're digital, so it's quite easy to very easily create a share link. I can just create a share link here, uh, copy that link, uh, rename it, and then I, I'll put it, I can send it to someone in an email and they'll get access to the, the project. Yeah. But I can also add them as users, uh, or you can even decide to make reports. So you can say, I want to include all the details. I want to include the structures, this type of information. So we can make customized reports. I'm not a big fan of reports because they end up being PDF and PDF is not very <laughs> nice uh, to share things with, but I'm a big fan of the ability to just share access through a link uh, yeah. and to browse together. And, and, and that share, share the share yeah. link capability extends not just in construction, but that's on the or the, the thermal ortho and all of that stuff. That's correct. Share link. Yeah, and we've also got a very advanced permission management system, so you can add all your subcontractors as companies, and then you can decide which companies have access to which sites. So we're working with large asset owners, which have, for example, ten different subcontractors in terms of construction, depending on regions, countries. And so they need to be able to give access, but based on different sites. And so we've got a whole permission management system around that, allowing them to very well manage basically who's got access to which sites, which information. Uh, Perfect. So 
And here we're looking at uh, the, the, the construction more advanced. So you can see we've got tiles, we've got some of the tables installed, we even got some of the panels. And when you click on any type of element, it can even tell you in which drone scans it has been detected. So we, we even link the elements throughout time. Uh, and then we can give quite advanced also statistics, which are going to tell you uh, how productive your team has been, completion of different elements on the site. Uh, you can download them. Um, so there's a lot of metrics that you can get out in terms of how productive you are uh, on top of basically being able to manage the quality, uh, which is the main focus on this on this product. Uh, and I think this product really nicely also works together with our field app, which is unfortunately it's hard to show today because uh, I can't share the, 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 the smartphone view. Um, but I can encourage anyone who would want more info on the, on the, on the field app or the field link to, to just go on the website to contact me. I can definitely give demos or we can even give you trial access and try out the app. Um, so a lot is possible there. Uh, but I think that's, that finalizes the demo today because there's a lot I can talk about. For example, we can manage equipment. You can see, you can manage, you can add your own drones. You can, there's even things where we can, uh, you know, you can manage if you go to a flown operation who ordering, you can, you can upload data, you can plan flights, you can check weather to make sure that the, the weather is correct on the day you're flying. So of course, we're taking also into account all of the operational aspects around drone flying. Uh, 